it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today I'm going to be giving you a big update on my next Iron Man project. This suit is nearing completion, so I'm going to be telling you about the next suit I'm going to build. Before that, I'd like to give a shout out to TechnoHog1. He's another UK YouTuber doing lots of great costuming projects, mainly doing Halo Pepper Cura, but also showing you the CAD for designing custom parts, and also doing vacuum forming and showing other techniques. You should check out his channel on the link below. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon crowdfunding campaign. Help me achieve my goals and get some rewards, including access to an exclusive live broadcast with me. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots. So let's talk about this new Iron Man suit project. Now, something I said a while ago was that I wanted to build a machine to put on the pieces of Iron Man. Um, and some of the pieces I designed so they could easily hook on and off. Um, and I designed some 3D printed latching pieces that were supposed to make the suit easier to fit together. Um, I can actually get the suit on single-handedly because I've got uh, various things that open up. So the forearms open up and clamp your arm instead of having to have uh, straps at the shoulders and so on. And some of these pieces are fixed on with magnetic fasteners. Um, however, as I've worked my way down the torso, it's been quite hard to maintain that level of latching. So it actually isn't really going to be possible to build a machine to put the suit on. Um, the other thing is, as the Iron Man series of movies and the Avengers movies have progressed, Tony Stark's kind of moved away from this gigantic room of robot arms that put his suit on, um, and mostly the technology's gone into the suit. So um, obviously in Iron Man 3, the suits fly around by themselves and scoop up a person and all the mechanics is built in to suit the suit up. So um, that would be a, quite a good way to go, and I had some plans for doing a gauntlet that perhaps has sliding sections that you can put your hand into, um, and then either a a machine winds it up or it's got a motor in that closes it up. But doing the whole suit is going to be quite complicated because there isn't really space for the mechanics. So it's rumoured that in the Avengers 2 movie the Hulkbuster is going to make an appearance which is a giant suit for fighting the Hulk, uh, typically in Marvel Comics at least. Um, so that sort of suit is going to allow for probably some more mechanics. So what I'd really like to build is a custom designed, inspired by Iron Man, but of my own design, Hulkbuster style suit that makes you about seven or eight feet tall, which is freestanding, you can climb into it, and then there's all sorts of mechatronics that close around you, and probably some of it's gonna be controlled by joysticks like the arms and things like that. So let's have a look at some concept sketches. So I've sketched this up in Autodesk 123D Design, which is free software. Although this is a CAD file of um, basically the frame for the Hulkbuster, I'm not actually going to use this CAD file to build the finished thing. It's purely I'm um, using it as a sketch pad to just get some ideas of rough proportions and what I need to build. So um, the blocks under the feet there are roughly one foot, so um, 30 centimeters, 12 inches. So the person's head is coming um, to about seven feet tall if you're my height, which is about six feet. Um, there'll be something over the top above this gantry and a sort of big fold over helmet, so that'll probably add another six inches or so, so the person's going to end up seven and a half feet tall. Uh, if there's any weapons on the gantry, then we're pushing up to eight feet for the whole thing in total. So let's just get rid of the person and have a look at the frame. So as I say, this is kind of a... it's a bit blocky and a bit, a bit of a crude representation of the final thing. The... Um, the actual build is going to have to be a bit more minimalist so it fits around the legs of the wearer. So starting at the bottom we've got the blocks that make the person higher, let's just zoom in on that. And um, instead of walking on, on flat feet if, uh, if I were just standing on blocks I've got these hinged parts um, which actually have sort of sprung pistons which will allow a sort of fake toe to roll over on from one st step to the next and the aim for that is to make walking a bit easier. Um, obviously we've got knee joints which fit around the person's knees and I'm not quite sure how the legs are going to fit in. There isn't really an option for bending down once the suit is on to um, clamp your legs into it in the same way that, that I've done with my previous Iron Man suit using skate straps. So I think there's going to be some sort of arrangement where you, this is basically twice as wide as a person's leg, so there'll be an arrangement where you can um, go in on the outside and bring your leg onto the inside to fit in between some sort of foam pegs that hold your foot in place. Um, anything that does hold 
the wearer's legs in place is going to have to be driven by cables from the upper body so they can be fastened in whilst um, you're in a standing position. So uh, working our way up here, obviously for the hip joints we've got quite a complicated motion so we need to have three degrees of freedom, which is what all this lot is. Um, that's just to remind me that needs to be there. Um, it probably won't look like that, in fact these will probably have to come more central but still allowing me to step in from the back and squeeze between them. So all of these joints will lock as well and that will be operated remotely by cables into the um, with control a controller of some sort in the upper body. So that will allow you to climb in with this whole thing freestanding then unlock all the joints and move around in it. So that's the basic structure. Um, once you've climbed into it, let's put the person back in, then as you can see the hooks here go over your shoulders and that effectively supports the weight of the upper body um, and then the legs hopefully move around as you do uh, with your legs fitted into the exoskeleton legs. So hopefully the additional height there which is only one foot doesn't make it too hard to walk around in. And um, as I say, any clamps for clamping your legs in will be operated by uh, a cable system in the upper body. So you should be able to get your arms back inside to effectively latch that and unlock all the joints while you're wearing it. The arms I've just full of sketched up on here, I've got some more detail on those in a moment. But hopefully they'll be attached to this gantry and some other points so they float there by themselves because you don't really want to support the whole weight of the oversized arms on your own arms. So the aim is that again that is freestanding um, and they stand there and there's an option for bringing your arm to the inside to operate perhaps a control panel um, around this area and I'm hoping there's all sorts of displays and buttons just in front of the wearer's face as well. So basically you can climb in and then put your arms out and sort of steer the upper body arms around. I think they're going to be attached with some sorts of pistons with springs in that are attached not only to the overhead gantry, but as I say to other anchor points on the body. So let's have a closer look at the arms. So here's the close up of the arm. As you probably noticed um, the blue stick man had his arms into the upper part, just the yellow part basically to push these around. So as I mentioned, these will be suspended on, on some sort of sprung pistons. So this arm is going to be roughly one and a half times bigger than a human arm, which means that um, basically the, the elbow won't bend in the same place. So the aim is that your human arm stays entirely in the yellow part in the upper arm. And as you can see, the hinge for the elbow of the suit um, kind of bends around that. So you can get your whole arm in here um, and then the elbow is mechatronic, so that's going to be motorised. Um, also means that if you fall forwards in the suit, you can fall onto the elbow of the suit, which is actually your the end of your own arm, rather than breaking an animatronic hand to pieces. So the hand is not shown, which will be on the end of the wrist there, and it will rotate. And the aim is that in the bottom of the upper arm, there will be a joystick, which uh, probably the front and back motion of the joystick controls the motor for the elbow, um, left and right perhaps rotates the hand on the end and the fire button causes the hand to grip. So, as I mentioned, the arm will be suspended so you can steer that around um, on its suspension with your actual arms and then the elbow down is mechatronic. So, this is quite a big suit and there's lots of big plain sections here that I don't really like in oversized suits. So I've been thinking about the texture that we should apply to this so we get lots of um, high impact visual detail all over the suit. So let's have a quick look at that. So here's one idea I came up with for surface texture and this is only going to be purely um, some parts of the suit. Um, it's not going to be all over but certainly things like the shoulder bells, the outside of the arms and legs potentially. Um, we can have something where we've got lots of small tiles that make up a lot of detail. So this is kind of on a mesh. Um, which also allows ventilation, also allows potentially if we put coloured lights shining through each hole they would um, shine around this quite nicely, which might be quite an interesting effect. Um, I've used typical Iron Man red and gold there, but it could be any, any combination of colours. Um, and we've got some sort of detail on each one, so these, these tiles perhaps could be formed out of sheet material and the detail could perhaps be um, 
3D printed. It's a little thing, a bit like Iron Man's hip pod. Um, and of course that will be stretched around on a contour to actually go around the arms and legs. Um, the mesh itself, I'm not sure if that would be like a 3D printed construction kit with lots of small pieces that fit onto hubs. Um, potentially, depending on the size of these, I think they're about uh, 10 to 15 centimetres in diameter, so potentially they could be 3D printed as well. Um, but the main fabrication of the suit, the frame is going to be probably timber, um, and then for the skins and the other bits and pieces, it's going to be a combination of 3D printing, also some probably high-density foam, foam PVC board that's thermoformed, vacuum forming, probably some resin cast pieces, um, pretty much all of the fabrication techniques, again, that I've used in the first suit, um, and using some of those lessons learned to see what fits best um, into the appropriate place. Uh, for the torso, the sections are going to have to open up, so um, having lots of small tiles lends itself quite well to having lots of seams, so that basically the whole thing is covered in a shell which um, opens with motors and servos, so you, when you climb inside it then completely covers you again. So um, it's going to be there's going to be a lot of attention to detail, a lot of high visual impact, um, and that's one of the reason I've, reasons I've sort of decided that we'll use lots of small tiles rather than big expanses of plain sections. So overall, it's going to be about this big and probably twice as wide as a normal Iron Man suit. Um, in terms of electronics, what I really like is to have a Wi-Fi hotspot inside, and that means that I can control the functions from my smartphone, whether I'm inside or outside. So perhaps I could have a button that I hit on a web interface that causes all the panels to open up so you can climb inside and also activate the animatronic functions, say the arms, some of the other features, um, lights and sounds. So from the point of view of the electronics inside, I'd really like that to interface to other bits of Iron Man electronics that I've already built. So last time I showed you my Iron Man electronic helmet, which is now almost finished. It would be really good if the uh, Hulkbuster suit could actually control that helmet. So if I'm wearing the Iron Man helmet whilst I'm inside the Hulkbuster, then I've still got an interface inside with a switch somewhere or a control panel or perhaps from the um, web interface that you can actually open and close the faceplate and turn on and off the eyes and still drive that display in the Iron Man helmet so that you can get messages, um, battery status from the Hulkbuster suit um, and other status reports. So I'm not going to be building this suit really until I've properly finished the first Iron Man suit, otherwise I'll get bored of that and it'll never get finished. Um, it's going to be another long build, starting with the frame, which as I said is going to be mostly made from timber. I'm going to be interspersing that with other projects, so um, you probably remember my Mr Fusion build from Back to the Future. And I've got some other ideas coming along, like my entirely 3D printed alien suit, and some other bits and pieces from Back to the Future. So check out my Facebook page for sneak peeks and updates. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to see the future videos. And also don't forget my Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots.